Greetings. Welcome to the Holocron. I'm Darth Lokwitter. This is one of my 2024 starting guides for the Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes mobile game. We're going to go through this guide and try to give new players all the necessary information to build through a profundity journey as their first major journey with the account. We're going to dominate fleet. We're also going to optimize the other game modes wherever we can, and it should allow us to be ahead of other players in terms of conquest, other events, fleet arena, and uh, we're calling this guide Pride of Rebellion. We called it Hope of the Rebellion for 2023. I'm using a different name to differentiate it as the new guide. I am doing a 2024 new player guide. It's going to explain game mechanics, game modes, and why it is that we're going to be building this uh, starting guide the way we are. So please go have a look at that. Uh, this guide is going to plan out, execute all the characters to purchase and develop. We're going to talk through shop, uh, use, resources, uh, spending on the right things. And as always, as we get started, remember, th this is a guide. It's meant to be a guideline. You can follow it to the letter. You can also adjust or alter it depending on if you find something that's uh, better or you think will work better. If there's changes to the game or if the light speed bundle comes out that uh, affects how you play, uh, all of these things may be determining factors in how you follow the guide. So remember, it is a guideline. It's not strictly these are this is it and the only things that you must do. I would say the commitment to make this guide work is medium. Uh, you have to be at least somewhat of a competitive player to make this work. If you're just in it to casually collect Star Wars and sit back and relax, then this may not be the guide for you. My recommendation for 2024 is strongly to spend about $100 to get started in the game. That may be a scary number, but just think about it. If you were to go to a video game store and buy something new for your PlayStation or Xbox or order it online or however you buy your games, you're still going to be out somewhere between $30 and $60 for a new game. So the Hyperdrive bundle costs $50. That's the cost of starting up this game in a good way in 2024. There's a lot of reasons for that, which we will cover as we go through this guide. But then uh, investing about another $50 after that uh, to go through this guide will help you get a head start. Now, the good news is once we uh, get Relic 9 on Admiral Radis, get this profundity journey underway, uh, you can pr play pretty much free to play for as long as you want to after that. There's just a little bit of a commitment uh, to go up front. If you do wish to play completely free to play, you can go back and look at the 2023 guides. Uh, 2023 Hope of Rebellion is uh, the free to play zero, uh, level 1 to 85 guide that will take you through, and it's pretty much the same thing. So you can go back and follow that if you want to play completely free to play. That is your choice. Um, and just, to, just as a reminder, one of the reasons why we're suggesting the Hyperdrive Bundle, this game has introduced a catch-up mechanic called Lightspeed Bundles. The Lightspeed Bundles offer often large quantities of relic characters that are already seven stars at relic level for very low cost to help new players catch up. While that's a great thing for players that want to catch up, it's also a disaster for players who want to play truly free-to-play because once a Lightspeed bundle comes out and a bunch of people buy it, a free-to-play player is left so far behind that uh, it really becomes a non-functional situation for those accounts. So uh, getting the Hyperdrive bundle puts you at level 85, qualifies you to purchase other Lightspeed bundles and uh, not get left years behind in the game. Uh, this build is predicated on the idea that we're going to get into Fleet Arena. We're going to establish early dominance. We're going to try to get at least top five placement in Fleet Arena from the start. This is a way in the game to get Fleet Crystals, and um, right now there's not another way in the game for us to get those. So with that Crystal Income, we can accelerate our account growth. Without that Crystal Income, we're left... Uh, yeah, uh, way behind. All right, so by driving as quickly as possible to the Profundity Fleet, that's going to establish a fleet where we no longer care about the light speed bundles. Once we have Profundity, we can beat uh, the Executor Fleet that other people might build. We can beat everything up to the Leviathan, and that should keep us in top five in the fleet arena for a long time. If a new player does purchase all the stuff required and, and power into Leviathan, that's okay. I, I mean, we, we can still place anywhere in the top five and be fine. 
All right, I will have a separate holocron uh, called Imperial Prejudice, and that's going to be the executor version of this guide. And people have asked me plenty of times in the past, uh, how do I pick between the two of them? And the answer is either one is a good way to play the game. And honestly, I build the two guides because they're equally good. Uh, the profundity journey that we're taking here is going to be better for conquest, <clears throat> and it's going to lead us toward Leia as a first galactic legend. The executor journey uh, leads more toward Jabba, and it doesn't require as much of that initial investment. So still have to buy the hyperdrive bundle, but you'll have to spend far less to keep on track uh, in terms of follow-up spending. And then if they do ever come out with a Jedi Knight Luke Lightspeed bundle, anything that helps complete that Jedi Knight Luke journey, uh, that's going to be a big leg up for the Jabba journey and potentially make the Executor more attractive. Uh, the Executor can beat the Leviathans, so it does provide a little more top-end uh, fleet power in the end. But either one of these guides is uh, doable. So with the Executor, maybe a little uh, earlier payout for the capital ship and maybe a little more toward, uh, you know, uh, P player versus player PvP game modes. Okay, so how we're going to go through this, we're going to talk about the initial fleet. We're going to talk about teams that we've laid out to optimize gameplay for the whole game. We're going to do a journey layout and kind of walk you through a timeline of how this can look building an account. I'm going to go through detailed shop use to talk to you about what to use in every shop. Uh, we're going to talk about Zetas, Omicrons, and Grand Arena, Conquest, all the different game modes and how this build might look in those game modes. Then I'm going to talk you through why we've picked certain characters and teams and go through some event overviews so you know what to expect in the events. And then we're going to talk about what you could do next with the account after you've completed your first big capital ship. Okay, so fresh out of the hyperdrive bundle, we're going to put together this little fleet. We're going to use Home 1 as the capital ship. We're going to use um, Slave 1, Boba Fett's ship. We're going to use Fives, the Umbran Starfighter. And we're going to use Biggs' uh, 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 X-Wing as the starting three. Now there's synergy here between these three ships. The special for Fives is going to do Target Lock, which will activate a taunt on Biggs so he can tank. And uh, the basic on your Slave 1 also does uh, target locks for more taunts and more protection recovery on bigs. The idea behind this, you're not going to have the biggest damage in the game, but you're going to be able to have a very survivable tank. You'll be able to chip away at the enemy's health, and uh, ultimately you'll be able to survive through their initial damage with the Biggs Dark Lighter uh, X-Wing. And that will get you through to later uh, when you can uh, win. The reinforcements, we're going to have Xanadu Blood and Vulture Droid. The Vulture Droid comes at five stars. We will have to finish out that missile to make sure that we can um, use that ship to counter opponents who might purchase or get the Hound's Tooth sooner than we do. Uh, that mi The missile will put... a. Um, buff immunity onto the Hound's Tooth. Once it has buff immunity, it can't recover protection with its skill, so it's pretty easy to take out that Hound's Tooth once you have buff immunity on it. So you'll bring in that Vulture Droid as your first reinforcement, get the buff immunity on it, and work on the Hound's Tooth. Home 1 has a bunch of assists and recovery. It goes along with the Rebels, and we will be able to build our own Hound's Tooth and the Outrider with a Relic Dash Rendar quite quickly in this build. Uh, eventually, you'll want to replace Slave 1 with Dash Rendar in your starting three. And you can use this fleet out of Hyperdrive Bundle with a few modifications and expect to be pretty high in fleet placement for the, t for the first three to four months. Once other people start building good stuff in fleet and start pushing you out of the top five, if that does happen, you can consider putting a relic onto your big Stark Lighter, making his ship much better, making that tank more survivable. Or if you get uh, Bosk done in a timely fashion, you can relic Bosk. Even if his Hound's Tooth isn't all the way to seven stars, a relic Bosk and a Hound's Tooth with the passive ability fully leveled is a problem for a lot of opponents. So with this fleet, we should be able to mix and match and uh, stay in the top of fleet until we get our profundity done. So the teams that are going to have the first priority with this journey, we're going to look at some early pilots. So 
that Akbar for the capital ship. We're going to build, put gear on him to help the capital ship Home One be better, and that's also going to uh, contribute to our raid contribution. Akbar is an excellent character for the current uh, premier raid. Big's Darklighter as a pilot, of course. Fives piloting that Umbra and Starfighter. Dash Rendar to get that Outrider, and he's also a part of the profundity journey itself. And then I did put Wedge up there. Wedge uh, also par can participate in the raid. Biggs won't be in the raid, but Wedge can participate in the raid. His uh, ship can also be used as a reinforcement. It also has a skill that does buff immunity. It can help you deal with early Houndstooth. The Admiral Radis team itself, uh, this is not the, the best long-term team, but you can build five characters out of the journey itself. Use Radis, Cassian, Jen Urso, Biston, and Mon Mothma all in the same team and that team is going to be a legitimate 5v5 team for all throughout the game as you build these characters up to relic. The, the third priority is going to be to put gear on these bounty hunters so we're going to avoid gearing up other characters when you buy the hyperdrive bundle you're really going to want to focus on gearing up those pilots first and then working on the Admiral Radis team next and working on the bounty hunters as pilots for those bounty hunter ships as the third priority. So that's sort of your first wave and what you're really going to focus your gear on. There's reasons for this that we'll get into later. Um, but this is definitely going to, to build us up in the right way starting out. Now Admiral Radis gets priority. Obviously you need to get those characters to gear 12 in order to put them at relic level. So having gear on other characters and not being able to relic your journey characters would be a mistake. The bounty hunters are going to be needed for Chewbacca and also the Hans Millennium Falcon journey, both of which are required to make this profundity shine. So we will want to get them up and running as soon as we can. In the second wave, we've got an Imperial Trooper team that's going to be Veers, Stark, and Piet, along with Moff Gideon and a good old-fashioned Stormtrooper. That's going to be a, a team that we're going to build for assault battles and other reasons. Uh, the Geos are going to be built in prior guides, I've always prioritized Geos. Now they're going to be a little bit on the back burner. And then the, the Commander Luke Skywalker team, this is all going to be in the second wave. Uh, the assault battles, when you're trying to take characters to Relic, you'll need a piece uh, in the bottom right-hand corner uh, that takes injector parts. Injector parts can be uh, achieved through Assault Battle Challenge Tier 1. Uh, being able to get some of those parts through these Challenge Tier 1 Assault Battles is really a big deal for how your account building goes. So we're going to want to get those uh, underway early so that we can start gathering those resources for free. The Geos, uh, if you join a guild that's doing Dark Side Geo Territory Battle, you can get Wat Tambor Shards. Uh, the Geo team is required for the Wat Tambor mission. I do strongly suggest if you're a newer player in the first six to eight months of play, do join a guild that's still doing dark side geo territory battle. Do get that Wat Tambor. If you don't get him and you join a guild with higher expectations early on, it's going to be hard for you to go back later and get Wat Tambor. The CLS team, uh, in order to unlock the team, so this unlock team of uh, farm boy Luke, Old Ben, Princess Leia, Stormtrooper Han, and R2-D2. Uh, I have these characters reliced on the, on the chart here that I'm showing you, but certainly we're not going to relic them to get CLS. To unlock CLS, they only need to be about gear 8 or so. So we're going to use minimal gear on those, and we're just going to build them up enough to get CLS unlocked and um, uh, move on from there. The reason that team has to wait a little bit this team does not build Empire characters right out of the gate, so you're going to have to build into those Empire characters through Phase 1 and Phase 2 to get that R2 unlocked in order to be able to get CLS. In the third wave, we're going to work a little bit on Phoenix. We have to relic Harrison Dula for this journey, so we might as well add Captain Rex to it. Captain Rex is part of the Leia journey. I'm going to recommend Leia as the follow-up to this Profundity build. So this all has a bit of synergy and makes sense later on. We're going to work on building the whole CLS team, including unlocking um, the C-3PO. We're going to build smugglers for Smuggler's Run, and we're going to build some kind of Jedi team. And it's not shown on here, but we will have to build up an Ewok team in order to unlock that C-3PO. 
So the CLS is one of the big payouts for this build. Uh, it's really good in Conquest. It's really good in a lot of game modes. It's one of the teams that uh, for as many years as Swiggo has been played, the CLS team has maintained its uh, ability to be one of the top teams in the game. And with the right data crowns, it still can beat Galactic Legends. So we're going to build it early. We're going to relic it. We need Han and Chewie relic for the Millennium Falcon as part of the Profundity journey anyway. Uh, they're not part of the Profundity journey, but we certainly need the Millennium Falcon to make the Profundity good. So that explains a little bit the synergy. And then the Smugglers Run, uh, for the Smugglers Run event, it's, it's a good event. We're going to build some Smugglers anyway, so we might as well finish out a few more of them, qualify for the event early, and start collecting that loot. And then the Jedi are for the future, and there's some synergies there that we'll talk about later. Our fleet farming, we're going to start out with Jedi Knight Anakin's ship, the Outrider, the Rebel Y-Wing. We're going to farm Biston's U-Wing, which is a requirement for the journey. That also comes out of the fleet shop. So we'll farm it at first, but then as we get closer to completion, we'll switch over and just finish it out out of the, the fleet store and make purchases from there. Uh, we're going to build the Geos. Sunfac uh, comes from the shop. We're not going to farm it. Prior guides, we farmed Sunfac ship from fleet nodes. But uh, since we're not going to build that fleet right away, we're going to let that take some time in this uh, current version of the build. Then you have plenty of time to, to just buy Sunfac out of the shop. So you don't have to hurry. You don't have to, to farm him and try to get that ship to seven stars right away. Uh, Slave 1 will have to be entirely shopped. And Biston's U-Wing, um, again, will be partly farmed from each. To lay out this guide, what I've done is sort of color code the different the things that we need to build. I've put them on a chart. I've estimated the amount of time that it will take to build each character so you can kind of see the comprehensive journey here. And again, it's probably too small for you all to read as part of the video, but it shows the light and dark side energy farms, what we have to build. The middle part is going to show the cantina farms that we have to farm up. And the last part shows the fleet farms. That sets the timeline. And then we can go from there, figure out which characters we're going to have available to put at relic level, um, and set a relic timeline. And then that relic timeline is going to help us figure out the order in which to relic these characters that makes the most sense for the build and end at the, at the right time uh, to get the profundity unlocked, sort of with really the shortest timeline that we can. So this timeline makes it 30 days. Um, I'm sorry, makes it about 30 weeks for a brand new player who doesn't really know a lot about the game. That gives leeway for people to, you know, make a few mistakes, discover what they need to, maybe, you know, have some bad luck with farming, whatever. Uh, but expect to get the profundity after about 30 weeks of play, so a little over seven months. The timeline is set by the fleet requirements farming those ships out of fleet, the Outrider and the Rebel Y-Wing. They're single shard drops. There's only a certain amount of shards that you can get each day. And it's going to take about that long in order for those ships to get finished out. So then the key is to get everything else we need in that same timeline. Hans Falcon is not part of the journey, but by the time we finish the Profundity, we already want to be able to take Hans Falcon and have that with a Relic Han and Chewie. So we're going to plan for that as well. Now, players who play fully efficiently, once you get Biston's U-Wing developed, you can have a free farming slot in Fleet. And you can go back and forth between farming the Rebel Y-Wing and the Outrider twice a day. Um, do a 25 crystal cost refresh and do the five uh, available uh, farms for, the, for those ships twice a day. And that will allow a completion um, fully optimized around 25 weeks. So uh, aggressive players, just know that there is that option available. It is that um, uh, the, the, the fleet farming times that are your limiting factor. So if you can cut time off of those fleet farms, you'll cut time off of the whole journey. If you can manage and maintain the relic cycle, uh, you can complete even quicker. But uh, it's not necessary. You don't have to push that hard unless you're very competitive and want to. I've allowed eight weeks to complete the first two relics. As your account gets started up, it's not going to be that easy to get all the parts. You'll start off with, you know, a low amount of injectors, a low amount of all the gear that you need to, to relic these characters up. So it's going to take a few weeks. You'll need to get into a guild. You'll need to start 
doing the raids. It may be two weeks before you even get your first raid payout and have currency to spend. So I've set up you know, a two-month timeline to get your first two relics and basically get the game up and running. Again, more aggressive or more experienced players will be able to get that up and running sooner, but uh, don't be afraid if it takes you a little uh, time to get up and running. That, that's how we've built this to make, make it comfortable for new players. We also need to front load character farms from the cantina. Once we get up and running, we're going to be using cantina energy almost exclusively to get signal data. So right up front, we need to farm these characters out of cantina so that we don't have a conflict later when we're trying to farm signal data. Uh, if you go in and you just farm up the first couple characters, Harris and Dula and Dash Rendar out of cantina, and you think to yourself, wow, that was pretty easy. That didn't take long at all. I got both these characters to seven stars. Uh, just realize that you have to farm a lot of signal data to get them up to the appropriate relic levels. And what I show for the cantina farms, it doesn't show you farming signal data. It just gives a block of time to farm the character. And at that same time, you're going to have to be splitting between farming the character and getting enough signal data to, to relic these characters. Also, it's not clear if you go into the home one journey, and a lot of people uh, got caught by this in the profundity journey, I mean. Um, you do need a seven-star capital ship to finish this journey. Now, if you get on this timeline and you can uh, get home one to six stars, you'll unlock an event that comes up once a month. It'll get you 15 shards per completion, but uh, let's say you're able to do that five times, uh, before your profundity journey is ready, you will only be at 75 shards toward a 7-star home 1. So you will have to refresh this potentially 3 or 4 times. Uh, I suggest refreshing it at least 3 times, and then by then you'll be able to see the timeline that you're on, and you'll be able to decide if that 4th refresh is necessary. But uh, don't get caught ready for the profundity fleet, but not ready with your uh, home one at seven stars. So get that home one to six stars as soon as possible, get this event running, and then do realize that you will have to do some refreshes. That's part of the crystal cost. It's part of why I'm gonna recommend that extra ongoing spending, the extra $50 worth of crystals that we're gonna spend throughout this journey. Part of that is to afford these refreshes. All right, so let's take a little closer look at the dark light farming. Uh, dark side energy, light side energy is the same basic energy that we've had since the start of the game. Radis, Mon Mothma uh, are for the journey. The Houndstooth, the IG-2000 ship, the Xanadu Blood Bosk are all for the ha uh, Hans Millennium Falcon journey. And it's also, of course, the bounty hunters that are going to be used to unlock Chewbacca himself. And then we do need to slide Piet in there as a seventh hard farm for that trooper assault battles team. Seven hard farms is most of your energy for each day using three refreshes. And just remember, if you have any leftover energy after this, you're going to farm light side 7B for Chirotech shock prods. That's always going to be your default farm for any extra energy that you have with light dark side energy. Uh, trust me now, believe me later. Uh, it's best if you do it that way. Farm these seven nodes once per day. Use any remaining energy to farm 7B for Chirotech shock prods. All right, the fleet farming visual, we're going to do Jedi Knight Anakin's ship. Again, it's not part of the journey, but I recommend to everybody all the time, farm this ship right away. Get it all the way to seven stars. It's required for the negotiator fleet. It's a good ship. Uh, it's another one of these uh, reinforcements that you can bring in that has buff immunity that can help you deal with an early hound's tooth. Um, and you can have it uh, with a negotiator fleet on a pretty short timeline that you'll probably even finish out before this profundity if you get into a good guild. So we're going to want to farm that. It's not required. You don't have to. Again, this is a guide and you could choose to follow it or not. But it is my guidance that there's uh, really a, a reason and it's useful and good to do to build this Jedi Knight Anakin ETA Starfighter. And then you're going to farm Biston's U-Wing, the Outrider, and the Rebel Y-Wing. And again, Biston's U-Wing you can farm up. You can also purchase it out of the shop. And at some point you can stop farming that and either save that fleet energy for something else or start farming another uh, so, some other character ship out of fleet with that 
with the energy that you spend. The cantina farming visual, uh, due to smugglers run and C-3PO event, geos have to wait. We, uh, be, because it's possible to relic characters pretty quickly with the current environment, with the way that the raid currency works, and we want to set that up right away, if we front load the geos, we're really going to miss an opportunity to start relicking characters right away. So in the current environment, uh, we have to get the other things as a priority. So you'll see that we're going to farm Dash Rendar, Harrison Dula. We'll farm Moff Gideon for that trooper team. Um, then we'll take a look at Hondo to finish out that Smuggler's Run team. Then we're going to need to get Old Ben and get that set up for that... Uh, uh, Oh, I'm sorry, Chief Chirpa. We're going to need uh, Chief Chirpa is in the blue there. That's going to be needed for the Ewok team to unlock C-3PO. And only then can we get into the Geos. And you'll see that that's many weeks. It's 10 weeks that we've got set aside for the Geos. But just remember, you're going to be farming the Geos and signal data. And by the end of that, we want to have the Geos all up to seven stars. There's three of them that we have to farm out of Cantina, the Brood Alpha, the Spy, and the Soldier. So over a course of 10 weeks, we're going to balance getting three Geos, getting signal data. And then at the end, we can start going into the next journey. Um, you can see there we've got Drogan for the Leia journey earmarked. If you want to do something different, obviously, you don't have to farm Drogan. If you find yourself in this first few weeks being able to farm up Dash Rendar and Harrison Dula and not having any problem getting your signal data. You can just pull these farms ahead and keep working on them and um, farm up other characters out of the cantina as you choose. Again, I don't know exactly, there's a statistical prediction of how many shards will drop, but if you get lucky and get more shards or get lucky and it, unlucky and it takes longer, uh, I can't know that. So uh, if you get ahead, then keep pulling stuff ahead, farm more characters. If you get behind, then just do your best to keep up and you know your timeline might be stretched. And the geos don't have to go to seven stars right away, so you can delay that. And maybe you don't, uh, maybe you don't get the geos all the way to seven stars. Okay, taking this apart even closer, looking at the first few weeks, uh, we do have Dash Rendar and Harrison Dula as your first couple re relics, and that's going to be uh, based on the idea that you can get both of those characters out of the cantina uh, pretty quickly. There are some shop characters that we could also get pretty quickly, but guaranteeing that we can get those to seven stars in the right timeline isn't uh, isn't fantastic it does depend on you getting into a good guild and being able to buy these characters with guild currency so i've set it up where the first eight weeks we just try to get these two characters farmed up to seven stars and get them to relic levels and you may not be able to complete dash rendar to relic seven right away just remember the timeline is set to get the characters to gear 13 and get the relic started uh, you will have to get him to Relic 7 eventually, but uh, it doesn't necessarily mean you'll have him all the way to Relic 4 at the end of four weeks. Same thing with Harrison Dula, um, giving you four weeks to Relic that. And then from there on, we're going to tighten the timeline and start looking at two-week timelines. It assumes that by now you're in a good guild. You've got, uh, you still got to buy a lot of the challenge, uh, the uh, uh, injector parts, because you won't have the challenge to your one assault battles under control yet. So we're still leaving it at a two-week timeline. Uh, Long-term, once your account gets up and rolling, you can relic a character almost every week, or efficient players can anyway. So these two-week timelines are uh, should be reasonable for, for a new player uh, to collect up the materials and get those done. So the first four, again, uh, Dash, Hera, then we're going to work on Han Solo. We will have bought him out of the raid store. Jin Erso, same thing. We will have bought her out of the raid store. And we'll keep going. Into Cassian Andor, he's also a shop character. Uh, by then, we may have unlocked CLS. I put CLS in this journey quite early on. This is sort of the, the earliest that I could reasonably expect him to be unlocked and ready to relic. Um, more likely, you'll have to do Mon Mothma and Radis potentially before CLS. But it's written this way just to give the indication that as soon as you have CLS and can get him to gear 12, he needs to be your target and you want to go ahead and get him to relic level as soon as you can to make that CLS team work better. That's going to help a lot throughout a whole lot of different game modes. 
Um, if, you, if you don't have him in week 15 or 16, that, that's fine. He can be pushed out. But uh, get working on him when you can. Then we're going through Mon Mothma. And then Admiral Raddus, I've allowed four weeks for Admiral Raddus. Again, it's a Relic 9. That is really steep for a new player to have to get all the materials together for. Scavenge out of the scavenger, put that stuff together. Um, you will have had to buy the uh, Relic 9 droid brains out of the shop. So we're given a long timeline to finish out Admiral Raddus. That also, you know, should allow you to finish any other characters that you need to relic up to their max relic level for the journey. After that, we're going to finish out Biston. That'll be the last relic for the journey. Uh, then we should be after week 24. Uh, the character should be ready to go. And then we're just waiting on finishing up those ships so that we can close it out. And again, I've done it this way in the most compact method possible to ensure that players who have double farmed the ships or tried to push their uh, farms to the, to the fullest extent will be able to do that 25-week unlock. I have Bosk here as a Relic 5. That may or may not be needed. This is sort of an optional Relic. I really do recommend it. The Hound's Tooth is such a good ship early on. Bosk is such a good character for um, in, in a Bounty Hunter team, any Bounty Hunter team. Uh, early game players who are also you know, playing the same as you are, they're really going to struggle to deal with a Relic 5 Bosk as a character in Grand Arena or as a uh, Relic 5 Hound's Tooth in Fleet. Then we're going to finish out the CLS team with Chewbacca, C-3PO, and uh, Chupio himself. Uh, we already have the uh, Han Solo from earlier on and um, uh, CLS from earlier on. So we should be in good shape with all five relics for the uh, CLS team. Now, I've put a few here in uh, dark color. Uh, an efficient player shouldn't take this long to to relic all these characters there may be a point where you get ahead and if that's the case these are relics that you can fit in that that are also very good uh admiral piet if you get him relicked up he's going to help your troopers do that challenge tier one a lot easier uh, vader of course you can take him all, anywhere up to relic seven he's a fantastic character still after all these years uh, fives, again, if we need early fleet power, relicking of fives is a way to get early fleet power. And I'll show you a nice trick with the relic fives uh, that you can use with the team um, here later in the holocron. And the Jedi Knight Anakin is and always has been such a useful character. His ship is good. The character is good. You can make a Qui-Gon Jinn team with him. Uh, I don't think you'll ever regret it taking your, your Anakin to Relic level. So those are the best four options out of what we're building anyway. Um, I don't have fives being built as a character, but again, if you have room for relicking because you're operating efficiently, you also shouldn't have any problem getting fives to seven stars if he's one of your Relic targets. So those are the four best options if you have room to Relic other characters. Now note on that Radis, these droid brains are needed for the Relic 9, and as it stands right now, as the making of this holocron, we can't get those out of the game for free uh, with any reasonable method for a new player. Other than purchasing them out of the shop, it's 1,500 crystals for five. And again, between this and the refreshes that you have to do for home one to get it to seven stars in a short period of time, uh, that's the reason why I'm recommending that you need to, to purchase some extra crystals. Now, you don't have to purchase them all at once. You can do the hyperdrive bundle. That gives you some crystals. You can use that to, to work through your refreshes. Then at some point, you can you know spend maybe $20, get some more crystals, make a purchase of droid brains, keep your cantina refreshes rolling so you can spend a little bit of money over time. But in order to make this run fully efficiently, if you try to get those crystals in game to be able to afford, you know, the 6,000 that you need for the droid brains as well as uh, the cantina refreshes, it's going to be hard. Uh, you also need these year to keypads. And with the new raid system, uh, I don't suggest buying the keypads directly anywhere in the game. You can buy the materials that break down at the scavenger for the keypads. So use your Mark II raid tokens to buy that gear to, to make these keypads rather than uh, going in and purchasing them somewhere in the game. This is a more efficient way to do it. 
Uh, and again, you can do it with in-game purchases instead of crystals this way. Uh, as we go through this timeline, it does make the assumption that we're getting good amount of refreshes. So the minimum amount of refreshes to make this work on the 30-week timeline, we have to do two refreshes of light and dark energy to get all seven of those farms. That also means that you have to pick up the free energy three times a day. We have to do three can cantina refreshes uh, pretty much every day. Remember that we have to get characters, signal data out of there, and we also need a lot of characters in this build that require cantina shop currency to purchase. So as long as we're getting our cantina refreshes, we're also generating that cantina shop currency. If we're not doing cantina refreshes, we'll get behind on the shop currency, we'll get behind on those characters, and uh, a lot of things about this build start to fall apart. We need, you need to do at least two refreshes on mods and at least two on ships. Uh, so that means you need 600 crystals a day to optimize the pace. Now the good news is if we actually are doing what we say we're going to do in fleet, Top placement in fleet is 400 crystals, so that takes the pressure. 600 crystals a day, if we're getting 400 out of fleet, uh, makes it a lot easier. I'll say top five, you know, somewhere around 350 crystals a day, and that means that, um, let's say, our burn rate on other crystals uh, is low. And then once you do the daily quests and all of the other things that you can qualify for in the game, get a little bit from Grand Arena, uh, it shouldn't be much of a problem at all maintaining 600 crystals. And uh, again, ideally, you want to do three refreshes on all of these energy types every day, and that's 750 crystals. So it's, it's pretty good. You also have to watch out in these first six months of your play if they do introduce a light speed bundle that has a bunch of ships that are at full relic level. Uh, just understand that if you're still working with your fleet, maybe you have relic one or two of your initial ships. Maybe you built the fives to do more damage to make sure you can stay in the top five, something like that. If people can then buy a rebel fleet with a whole bunch of relic rebels in ships, you may be pushed out of the top five in a hurry if you don't also buy the light speed bundle. So there is a little bit of pressure to keep up with everybody else. Uh, again, once you have the profundity, this is not an issue. But while you're getting the profundity, you do not want to get pushed out of fleet placement or it's going to make these refreshes a really hard to get. So to take this whole journey and put it together, uh, there is a, a easy farming setup that you can do. What I do is set up characters on light side and dark side separately. Um, so we need five characters out of the dark side or light side, two characters on dark um, dark energy nodes, and then the fleet stuff we can get with this series of characters. So you can go into squads. You can create these character tabs. Uh, Django Fett, if you do the Eighth Brother, that's the same node as uh, Xanadu Blood, I believe. Droidica is on the IG-2000. Or maybe it's the other way around, but those are your two ships that you need. They're on the same nodes as those characters. Uh, Mon Mothma, you need to farm for the Journey of Piet. We need to farm for the Trooper team. Uh, Django Fett is on the node with Hound's Tooth, so that's why we're using that node as a setup. Radis and Bosk, we have to farm for the characters. Uh, then the tab below, we can click on Jedi Knight Anakin and go to his ship. If you look at the little graphic here, you can see Dash Rendar. When you bring up Dash Rendar as a character, you'll see the stars. You can click on the stars to farm that character itself, or you can click on the ship. It'll take you to the ship, and then you click on the stars to find the node where the ship is farmed. Uh, so anyway, you go to Anakin, you touch his ship, you go to the node to farm his ship, Grief Karg is on the node with the Rebel Y-Wing. You can farm it from there. Uh, Dash Rendar, you'll have to click his ship to go to the Outrider and farm him. And then the Scarif Rebel Pathfinder is on the node for Biston's U-Wing. So by setting up these tabs, you touch the characters and go farm their nodes, um, or touch their ships and go farm the nodes. But it's an easy way to set up all the farms you need. And if you farm these uh, seven light and dark nodes and these four fleet nodes that's the first wave of characters that's the first round and it's what you need to farm to get the profundity unlocked uh, along with all the other stuff that we're doing so uh, don't worry if a bunch of players if you get into your fleet node and you see that a bunch of other people are also building good ships uh, you only need to be able to beat them and get into the top five once a day uh, remember if, if you're third place when you get your payout you get paid out for third place it doesn't matter what your placement is for the next 23 hours 
A lot of fleets will organize a fleet shard to coordinate payout times. And remember, 25, 24 people can get number one every day if they separate out their payout times. Um, uh, so manage your payout time, join a fleet shard if you establish yourself right away as one of the top players and somebody establishes a fleet shard. You can expect that somebody will reach out for you and they'll ask you your payout time and you can either use the payout time that you have scheduled or you can adjust the time in the uh, system timing in your game to get a different payout time and make it easy for everybody to get paid in Fleet Arena. If you find that you can't beat one of the top five players with your fleet, so you can't get your placement, then you do have to build good enough ships to be able to push your way up there when it's your payout time. And again, I recommend bigs as a relic as the first way to try to solve that, and fives as a relic as your second way to try to solve that. Building good ships that you'll never regret building, good characters that you'll never regret relicking, to maintain that uh, top five fleet placement until you get the profundity. All right, so let's go through shop management. Uh, with each of these shops, think about a banking method. It's what I use. Uh, I don't ever go to zero on my currency. With certain characters, they show up in the shop infrequently. I always want to make sure I have the currency to be able to purchase them when they show up. So with most of these shops, I'll get a bank of about 3,000 set up. When I'm over 3,000, I'll buy what I want. Uh, when I'm under 3,000, then I'm just only buying the critical things that are rare when they show up. Um, you can do it your own way. Uh, again, it's a recommendation as part of this guide. You don't want to miss opportunities to buy critical characters. In the first shop tab, in shipments, you'll see that there's four items here that you can buy for credits. They're not the top four items. They're a little further down in the shop. But these items for credits are some of the best deals in the game. A lot of the stuff that you buy here can be used for characters or shredded at the, the scavenger to make relics for characters. So every time you come into the shops and these are lit up, spend credits to purchase them. Again, only spend credits in the shop. Uh, don't accidentally click the ones with uh, crystals and start spending all your crystals over here. We don't want to do that. So be careful when you go in the shop. Buy the stuff that costs credits and buy them every time that they're up. They're, they're a ridiculously good deal. In the weekly shipments, it's not a shop that we want to use much. Uh, paying crystals for gear is really inefficient in the game. We don't want to do that, so avoid spending crystals for gear as much as you can. However, for this build, we will have to buy the droid brains, and this is a weekly shipment, so just realize that you're going to have to go in here and make a purchase of five of those droid brains for 1,500 crystals, and then it'll be the next week before that'll refresh. You need to make four purchases because you need 20 in total. Uh, so you'll need to make those four purchases over, you know, four weeks. In the cantina shop, oh, I put Boba on here. Boba's already un should be unlocked through the hyperdrive bundle, so that's, uh, that's an error on my part. But uh, we're going to go into the shop. We're going to get a six-star swarm trooper. Then we're going to build a six star a seven star stormtrooper han then we're going to seven star that biston for the journey we're going to get qui-gon jinn to a point where he's unlocked um we're going to get stormtrooper and cassian's u-wing to seven stars uh, this is a lot of currency especially when you start buying the cassian's u-wing it's going to take a long time to build that up uh, but we do want to get that stormtrooper going we need him eventually to seven stars to be part of that Imperial Trooper team to take on the assault battles. Stormtrooper Han's going to be needed for the unlock of CLS and Biston for the journey himself. Qui-Gon Jinn if we want to build the, uh, the, the Jedi team for Grand Arena. In Guild Activity Shop, uh, this has been changed in the last year. It's a lot different and a lot better than it's ever been in the past. I really suggest making a bank here so that we can focus on the right characters in the initial phases and uh, make sure that we get the right characters built up. So what characters are we going to build and what should we do about credits? Because in guild shopping, we can also buy credits. You're going to be out of credits pretty much all the time in this game um, for years. It, it doesn't change. It doesn't get better later. Every time you want to build a character, it's a huge outlay in credits. When you want to work on mods, it takes a lot of credits. So you're going to be making a lot of purchases of credits out of this shop. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. The credits are available. Just understand that this is where you have to get them. You don't want to buy them out of the shop 
out of the store for crystals, for example, um, you want to buy them out of this guild shop. So we're going to make a balance here. So with, uh, with the old currency, with this one that looks like four stacked coins together, um, just save that. You can buy characters. You can buy gear. Uh, basically, at, right at the start, there's some gear in here that's green or blue that costs somewhere between 100 and 200 currency. Um, that's going to help you level up low-level characters. So you can buy that. Or I would say just save up and buy Mark IV Bactagels out of here. This is the long-term place where we want to get the Mark IV Bactagels. Um, so don't waste the currency. You can buy characters out of here, but all the characters that you can buy are also for raid currency down at the very, very bottom of this tab. So buy them for the raid currency. Don't really buy them for the old guild currency. Save that up. Use that to make it easy. Buy your uh, Mark III detonators and Mark V weapon mods and all that stuff. And then uh, back to gel. Uh, for characters, we're going to separate this out into waves. We're going to need a bunch of characters out of here. So the first four characters that you're going to need, if you built them out of the shop here, could be up to 42,900 of the Mark I raid tokens. Um, and you could get all of these characters finished in three weeks if you focus just on characters and credits. So what you're going to do, you're going to build up a bank. Every time you go in here, you're going to buy Han Solo, Young Han, Stark, and Jyn Erso. Stark for the troopers, Jyn for the journey, a young Han to finish out your um, uh, smugglers. Now remember, Dash only has to get to six stars for the smugglers run. So you can take him up to six stars and stop. And um, Han Solo costs 700 per purchase. The others only cost 200 So make sure that you don't fall behind in your Han Solo purchases. And uh, if you do buy gear, only buy the gear to get Dash or Hera, those are your first two relics. Uh, you need to get them to gear 12, and maybe you'll have to buy a little bit of gear out of the shop to get them to gear 12, but don't buy anything else. Really only spend like 80% of the currency at least on characters and 20% on um, currency, and you'll be able to get these characters unlocked within the first three weeks. Now, again, that's three weeks after you're in a guild assuming that they have a very low payout, at least box two in the new raid. That's what we're assuming. Anything better than that is going to go faster than this, but, uh, but that's the assumption we're making uh, so that everybody can be at least this successful. Once you get those characters completed out to six stars for uh, Young Han and seven stars for everybody else, you can start moving on to the second wave of shopping. Here we're going to do five characters. We're going to set up for the C-3PO and CLS journeys. So we're going to buy three different Ewoks, Low Gray, Elder, and Paplu, and we're going to get Luke and Old Ben out of the shop. It's 33,000 Mark I raid tokens to get these characters all the way built up. We should have Old Ben already from the Hyperdrive bundle, but uh, as long as we split now, we can spend about a third of the credits on characters, we can, or a third of the uh, uh, Mark I raid tokens, I should say. Uh, a third of it's going to go toward purchasing credits. A third of it's going to go toward purchasing these characters. A third of it's going to go toward purchasing gear. And then it puts us on about a six-week timeline to get these guys all to seven stars. Remember that you can unlock and gear up these characters while you're still finishing them out to seven stars. So by the time you get them to seven, they should be ready to do their respective journeys. The Ewoks, you can take all the way up to gear 11 or 12. And the Han's uh, CLS journey characters only take up to about gear eight or nine. Stop there. Don't waste resources on them. Third phase, we're going to finish out Sunfac and General Kenobi. General Kenobi is going to be the pilot for the negotiator. He's going to be a Jedi character that we want in the account. And Sunfac, by now we should have the Geos started, and we can start farming up Sunfac and get him into the Geo team. And uh, we're going to take 10 weeks to do this, and that's going to be about a fifth of our uh, materials going toward credits. 
about a fifth of it going toward these characters, and about three-fifths of it by now is going to be going toward gear. You're going to have a lot more of the characters that you need to gear up for the trooper team, for the Ewoks to unlock C-3PO, all of that stuff. So you'll be buying a lot more gear out of the shop by this time. So just to recap, when you start in this raid shop, you're going to start out focusing on these set of four characters, and you're really only going to spend on these four characters and buying credits to help level up things in the account. You're going to move on to the second phase. You're going to farm these characters. You're going to split it between quite a lot of credits, uh, quite a lot of character shards, and a little bit of gear. And then you're going to be spending mostly on gear and finishing out these characters and still buying some credits. Okay, I hope that all makes sense. Then uh, for the Mark II raid tokens, focus in on these gold gear pieces that you need to purchase uh, to relic characters. You'll know that you're buying the right pieces because they cost $8.55 for $15, $10.55 for $15, or, or on the, you know, a little higher up, you'll see them $2.85 or $3.55 for five shards. Those are the most efficient purchases. You can purchase other stuff with your Mark II raid tokens, uh, but again, you're going to buy this gear. You're also going to buy gear to make those uh, gear to keypads. So if you spend it on a whole bunch of other stuff, then you won't have enough to make the keypads and make the other stuff for scavenged materials that you need in order to keep this journey on track. So I've calculated that stuff all out. If you deviate too far from it, it'll make things take longer. All right, for the Mark III raid tokens that you get, uh, we have to buy arrow magnifiers. We need those to get the Cassian Andor to Relic 8, and we also need them to get um, Radis to Relic 9. So you'll need 20 of them for... Um, Cassian, and you'll need 40 of them for uh, Radis. So it's really quite a lot of them you have to buy out of here. So just really focus on only buying arrow magnifiers at first until you get plenty of those. And then impulse detectors are also a pretty good value out of the shop. For the Electrium and the Zenbittle, remember, same thing, you can farm or purchase materials to make those. Uh, so, you know, think about doing that instead. But, uh, but once you get the arrow magnifiers under control, it's no problem. You can buy uh, impulse detectors, electrium, uh, are also very good values out of this shop. In the Squad Arena store, we're going to work on Akbar right away. We're going to finish him out to seven stars. We're going to put gear on him. We're going to optimize this home one cap capital ship. Uh, take him up to gear 12 eventually, right? So Akbar at Gear 12 is going to give you a good capital ship. It's going to give you good participation in the raid. It's uh, Akbar is not an exciting character to put on a team somewhere, but he uh, is massively valuable for fleet and raid at this point in the game. We're going to cast in up to seven stars, IG-88, finish out Leia. Once we've got those four things built out of this, we are only going to work on prestige from there on out. Just make those prestige purchases so that we can get the profundity up and running as soon as possible. In the Galactic War store, right at first we're going to buy mostly ships. So the Geo ships out of here, the Umbran Starfighter, Biggs uh, X-Wing, we're going to spend those credits. Uh, we're going to get 1,200 of this currency every day, and it's going to buy three ship purchases every day. And uh, uh, that's fine. That's what we want to do at first. Get our fleets up and running. And then eventually um, we're going to settle in on Cad, Bane, Tebow, and Poggle. Uh, again, we need Cad, Bane for the Bounty Hunter team. We need Tebow for our Ewoks, and we need Poggle for our Geos. Uh, so, so we'll eventually be working on all of them. I suggest, again, banking at least 1,200 currency so that we can always get Sunfax ship when it shows up. Um, but again, play your game your way. Uh, in the mod store, we typically won't use that as a new new player. It's very expensive in terms of credits or shipbuilding materials. And eventually, yeah, you will want to use this shop, but early on, it's way too much resources uh, to, to provide good value. In the fleet store, uh, man, there's a huge priority. So we're going to try to keep a big bank. I suggest 3,000 in fleet currency so that you can always buy the critical characters. Let's go through a list of all the stuff that we need to buy out of fleet. So the priority is going to be that Biston's U-Wing. We're going to want to be able to buy that every single time it shows up. We're going to want to take that Umbran Starfighter to seven stars as soon as we can. Uh, five ship, again, it's going to be our big hitter in the 
uh, fleet that we're going to build right at first. So uh, taking that up is important. General Grievous, we want to purchase him whenever he shows up. Again, it's not a priority to get him unlocked and up and running so much as it is that if you don't purchase Grievous by the time you do want him, uh, if you don't have him already ready to go, it's really going to be a long haul to get him started and get him up and running. Sunsfax ship is pretty rare. Uh, and again, we can buy him, um, Sunfac, the character himself with the Mark I raid tokens. So we don't need to buy Sunfac as a character anymore out of the fleet store. We can just focus on only his ship. Slave One, we're going to have to buy out of the shop entirely. And then Darth Vader, of course, we're eventually going to want to get him to seven stars. He's not as much of a priority as he has been in the past. Once we start finishing up stuff on that top list, then we can look at Ghost and Phantom, uh, Scarif Rebel, Pathfinder, Plo Koon and his ship. Plo is, uh, Plo's ship is really nice. It's a good reinforcement that could be used throughout the game. Um, but it's not a priority, but we can get to it eventually. You can get Ezra Bridger out of here too once we start looking at Phoenix. And then uh, the TIE Advanced and, and Rex's are, are sort of things that you will eventually buy, but they're pretty far down on the priority list for all the other stuff that we need. So buying Biston's U-Wing does reduce the amount of time that you need to spend farming that and give you the opportunity to double farm some other ships or just give you that fleet energy back for making relic characters. Vader's less critical than before. We're not in a rush, uh, but we do want Grievous unlocked so that whenever we get the Malevolence, we can go ahead and get that up to uh, have Grievous at gear 11 and get the Malevolence uh, all the way on the passive. Uh, as with crystals, uh, you know, good placement in fleet means more currency. So we, we've got to push for the top five in fleet. And that's really our priority here early on. Once we get into a guild, we'll be getting these guild tokens for this uh, guild event shop. Uh, when you get your guild event two tokens right away, you're going to be short on injector parts. I suggest for the first four relic characters, so that represents about 10 to 12 weeks of play. Um, spend all the get to that you get on injector parts to help relic characters, but spend it only on injector parts ever. Don't start buying Cairo yet. Don't start buying other things that you think you might need, character shards, whatever. Just don't do it. Uh, if you don't need the injector parts, then save the currency. Um, in the once we have the first few relic characters underway, then we're only ever going to spend that get to on the negotiator. We're going to take the negotiator to five stars first and the malevolence to five stars second. Trust me when I tell you that unlocking these ships is really a priority. Don't think uh, this is one of those things where I'm going to say it's a guide. But if you think you know better, I'm telling you, you don't. Get these two ships unlocked to five stars. You're going to need them for Grand Arena. You're going to need them all throughout the game. Territory, war, defense. Even though you're building a, a profundity fleet and that's going to optimize your fleet arena, you're still going to need both the Malevolence and the Negotiator throughout the whole game. And if you don't buy them early, the longer you go into the game, the harder it is to go back and get them. So swallow the bitter pill. Build your first few relics and then just spend the next seven, eight months, whatever it takes, getting both of these ships at least unlocked to five stars. When it comes to your guild event token one, use that for Veers and for Sunfax ship. And then once you get Veers under control, uh, seven stars, you get Sunfax ship where you want it. Then you can use this for gear uh, to make your relic characters. The championship store opens up after 85 when you play Grand Arena. Uh, we're going to use this mainly for Kairos. You can also use it for injector parts early on, but mainly we're going to want to buy a Cairo tech using that currency. Uh, the shard stop the store opens up when you get a character to seven stars. As soon as you get extra character shards for a character that you already have at seven stars, it will convert those to shard shop currency. And over here, we're going to buy gold and purple materials to make relic characters. And you know that you're on the right tab or the right line because they cost 360 gold, uh, 360 currency each. So make purchases out of here for 360. Make that your priority. There's a lot of other stuff that you can buy later, but right at first, just prioritize only making these 360 cost purchases to help relic characters. The shard shop is really the difference between success and failure for uh, 
full optimization of your build path. If you make good use of the shard shop currency, buy those 360 uh, cost parts. You can relic characters a lot faster, and once you get ahead, you'll stay ahead. Uh, the snowball effect is really uh, true here. So focus down, get the right stuff. Never buy Grievous Shards, never buy the gold parts that, that, that cost 720 because you're in a hurry to relic a character. It's better to wait, let the game come to you, and make smart purchases with those shops. If you don't have Shard Shop currency to make those purchases, just remember, if you have extra currency for um, uh, Cantina, for Squad Arena, for even for Fleet sometimes, a Galactic War Store, once you get everything purchased you want out of there, you can go in there and purchase the same characters you've already purchased. So let's say you go to Galactic War Store, you've already got the Geo ships at seven stars. You can make purchases of Geo ships, convert their shards to shard shop currency, and in that way you'll use your Galactic War currency, actually convert it to shard shop currency, and be able to use that to help relic your characters. So feed the shard shop. Use of this shop is critical to relicking characters on a short timeline. Also with bronze impacts, um, use all the bronze impacts you can. Uh, just open them up. Don't don't spend them. There's some items in the game that you can buy for friendship points. Don't do that. Just use all your friendship points to open up bronze impacts. That also is going to get you a lot of uh, low-level gear and shards to feed the shard shop. So keep that keep that running. Focus the three cost, 360 costs at first, regardless what else is in there, and how tempting it might be to buy, you know, carbontes or stun guns or whatever else is in there. Um, just really focus on on the relic materials. Conquest store. Once you get into conquest and start getting conquest currency, uh, be aware that it's more efficient to go to the scavenger and buy materials from the scavengers in conquest itself than it is out of the shops. If you really need to make purchases out of the shops, focus on the good gear like. Carbontes, stun guns, things like that. But generally, if you go to the scavengers, you can buy injector parts or signal data or, you know, more gear 13 stuff for making relics. Okay, to summarize the shop use, prioritize your shops, uh, get characters first for your journeys. So with the raid currency, with the, uh, uh, you know, fleet, galactic war store, all these different types of currencies. We want to collect up these characters and get them to seven stars so that we can work on them. And then ideally, once you get that all stabilized, look ahead to your next journey, figure out what you need for your next journey, and again, start using the stores efficiently uh, for your next journey. Let's talk about the store itself. Not the shops, but the store. We can get Bronzium data cards out of here for 250 friendship points. That's, you know, fine. Don't buy data cards or credit Packs, again, we can buy the credits for raid currency, and the data cards are random, and we're rarely going to get the characters that we want. So don't, don't waste your crystals on any of this stuff, please. There's an online store. If you go to the, the link here, uh, Galaxy of Heroes, Star Wars, EA, just search online and type in Swiggo online store, and it'll come up. Um, set it up, link your account to it, and then each day you're going to get a free pack. Uh, you can't get that free pack out of the in-game store. You can only get it out of the web store. So if you are going to the web store and getting these rewards, that's going to put you ahead of anybody who is not getting the free rewards. So the bottom line is put yourself ahead, go to the web store every day, get your free, free materials, and uh, stay ahead of other people who don't. All right. So the fleet material four challenges. In the hyperdrive bundle, we're gonna get the material challenge three for free. Um, and again, we're talking specifically about the dark side material three challenge that gives you Zeta materials. It's nice to get this leveled up to the material four challenge, but with this build, we're working on a lot of light side ships. The dark side ships will come along later as we build the geo ships and put geos in them. Um, but don't be in a huge hurry in this particular build to try to get a bunch of six star dark side ships. It'll come, just but just wait for the geos and the bounty hunter ships and you'll be fine. Now, you do have to rush for your light side ships, right? You have to get as many light side ships as you can. You wanna unlock that home one at uh, six stars, get the event up and running. So 
this is talking about the material challenge for the dark side stuff um, only. Let's talk now about Zetas in the game. So as we come in right at first, uh, two of the most important Zetas that we're going to have are Piet with Emperor's Trap and Veers with Aggressive Tactician. These are not part of the journey or the journey characters, but uh, even before we get our trooper team up and running in seven stars and ready to do the challenge tier of one events, the, the troopers are still already a, a super competent team. So even at three stars with relatively low gear, you, you will be shocked at how much stuff that the troopers can take out. So we're really going to put a big priority on getting these two Zetas up and running, get that trooper team up and running. It'll help you in Grand Arena. It will help with uh, galactic challenges that come across, uh, all kinds of different things in the game. Uh, so let, let's take a look at those as the first couple. The third Zeta we're going to put as Merciless Massacre on Darth Vader. Again, we don't have to have Vader maxed out for Merciless Massacre to already be making a difference. So we'll take a look at that as one of our early uh, Zetas. Um, then we're going to start doing things that are the journey characters or, let's say, other critical things for the path that we're building. Put two Zetas onto Admiral Raddus. Put three of them on Commander Luke Skywalker. Chewbacca, loyal friend. By this time, we should have the Geos up and running, and we should want uh, something on Geo Brood Alpha, Queen's Will. If Bosk is a good character for you, you're making use of the Hound's Tooth in your pre-profundity fleet, or if you Relic Bosk, then On the Hunt is a pretty good uh, Zeta to grab. And then Han, shoots, uh, Han Solo shoots first is uh, going to finish out this list. And again, there's, there's other things we could do if you wanted to uh, get a Qui-Gon Jinn Omicron in GAC, for example. That might take priority. It needs a Zeta to get the Omicron, so maybe that comes before some of these other things. Again, this is just kind of a recommended list. These are kind of the core things that we need to, to work on in this first, uh, let's say, 10 to 20 weeks. By the time you get the profundity unlocked, you'll have a lot more than 12 Zetas, uh, so you'll have to, you know, go from here and, and kind of look where to put them. But this is a recommendation of, I think, the most high-value Zetas in the, in, within this journey starting out. Uh, Chirpa's Zeta, Chief Chirpa, for the Ewok event might also be something that you'll have to look at. It's not in the list, but uh, maybe something that you need to do. Omicrons, I do suggest the Radis Omicron. Um, I suggest the Poggle Omicron. Even with uh, garbage geos, that Poggle Omicron is a monster in Territory Wars. And uh, even late game players sometimes struggle to deal with it uh, with a decent uh, geo team. So uh, a Omicron Poggle team with relatively low gear for low level Territory Wars is, is a menace. Uh, Qui-Gon Jinn I still think is one of the best Omicrons in the game if you like Grand Arena. So we're going to suggest that. Wampa, Savage, Mace Windu, Iden Versio, all good Omicrons for the early game. They all have specific purposes and uh, utility. So those are things that I can suggest to look at. And again, by then, by the time you've put on this many Omicrons, you will have done your own research and made your own decisions on what comes next. In Grand Arena, when you're first starting out, you're going to join uh, Carbonite, and uh, you're going to fight accounts that are ridiculous. They're, they're going to be, you know, 6.8 million galactic power with a bunch of galactic legends, and you don't have any chance of beating them. Uh, don't get discouraged. Just realize that some players don't play, or they rarely play GAC. They join, um, and they just don't play. So if you go in there and get 10 points and never beat one of their teams, you can still get a win because they don't play at all. So about half the time, these monster accounts, they don't even play. Don't worry about it. In fair matchups, uh, you want to have a, a, a trooper with decent speed, Moff Gideon, if you can manage it. He's one of the fastest characters in the game right now. So you get in there with troopers, you can put a big dent in uh, whatever your opponent puts on defense. Uh, Geos are an early game menace for a lot of people, but troopers will take them out. So all you got to do is have one trooper that's fast enough to go before the Geos, and you shouldn't have a problem uh, killing all the, the Geos that you come across in Grand Arena that are built at, a let's say, a fair, <coughs> a fair or comparative level to you. 
Um, it'll take you a while to move out of Carbonite just because you have to wade through all of those big accounts that are down there doing nothing. But, uh, you know, just be patient with it. And don't, uh, don't give up on Grand Arena, but at the same time, don't have the expectation that you're suddenly going to be Chromium after, you know, three, three rounds of GAC. Um, once you get the CLS team up and running, that's going to be your main offensive team. You're going to put uh, Geos on defense, for example, and then just bust open their defense with your CLS team and try to score more points. Uh, it's a good early game strategy to put you ahead of other people. And the Radis team is the real deal, so you don't have to, to worry about that. Your Admiral Radis team that you're putting together as part of this journey uh, can either be a, a massive defense on the bottom front corner or it can be uh, good on offense. So eventually with GAC, what we're probably going to end up doing is putting that Radis team up front here in the bottom right corner. Um, that's your bottom front zone. Try to put a team there that your opponent can't beat. Um, a lot of early game accounts are not going to be able to beat the Radis team with, uh, with the Rogue One stuff in it. And the profundity on defense, same thing. Uh, your opponents probably won't be able to beat that. But then you still have to have enough offense to beat their stuff. That's where we've said, you know, build into that malevolence and negotiator and build into some good offensive teams that you can use to break through and get the win. In Conquest, for the few, first few months, this build is really going to be focused on getting fleet up and running. Uh, Conquest is going to be hard. So even easy Conquest, when you go into it for the first time, expect a struggle. Um, expect it to t maybe take two or three rounds before you can get through Easy Conquest. Once you get CLS up and running in any meaningful way, CLS will carve through Conquest and you'll be able to complete Easy Mode. Uh, the Radis team also does really well in Conquest. It won't be a problem with, with CLS and Radis uh, to finish out. Uh, just remember, uh, get into Normal as soon as you can. Uh, even once you get to Box 3 in Normal, you're already getting more rewards than you can get for the entirety of Easy. So get out of easy mode as soon as possible. Get into normal mode, and don't worry about it. Don't look back. Don't think of what what might have happened this round if you'd gone easy mode. You know, maybe you go into normal and only get through three zones. That's fine. Again, CLS will be able to once you get a full relic CLS team, it can pretty much do anything in hard conquest. So it should be able to do anything in, in normal conquest as well. Early game guild goals. We want to try to get into a a guild that has Wat Tambor. We are going to build the Geos eventually, and you know maybe we can get into a guild doing Dark Side Geo before that. Um, but we want to collect up Wat Tambor shards. This is another one of those things where if you don't do it early in your play, it's going to be really hard to go back later and ever get Wat Tambor. So I suggest a team that's doing um, like Light Side Hoth and Dark Side Geo. And stay in that for your first six to eight months while you're building Profundity. Get Wak Tambor unlocked and, uh, you know, plan to move on to a better guild after, let's say, eight months to a year. Uh, then get into a better guild and move on. That's fine. But, uh, uh, but it is, you know, it's, it's a bit in your best interest to start off modest and work your way up getting that Wak Tambor in the meantime. All right, now we'll go over general info. We're going to talk about characters, the teams, the objectives, and kind of try to make sense and explain a little bit the why behind all this is picked the way it is and what you're going to get out of it. So the Bounty Hunter team, um, we've got Bosk, IG-88, Cad Bane, and Boba Fett. And behind my head, we have Jango Fett. Um, I just put this team up here to show that with this team at 7 stars, uh, Gear 12 Bosk, gear 10 and 11 on the other characters. Um, I was able to complete the seven star uh, Chewbacca journey. Now, Grief Karga is a much better character for this journey. So if that's the fifth character that you put in with these other four, uh, you should find it even easier to complete that seven star Chewbacca journey. Just be aware that that is a, a bit of RNG and that you're not, you're, you're probably not going to get it on the first try. If you have better mods, you know, mod the characters well and, and go in there. Um, Han's Millennium Falcon isn't a requirement for the profundity, but we really want Han and Chewie. We want them relic. We want them in that Millennium Falcon as part of the, uh, uh, the package that we're going to build here. 
All right, at the time of this holocron, Grief Karga is still on the node with the Rebel Y-Wing. We're going to build him. He's a better fifth, so build him instead of Django. But Django is a very versatile character, and maybe some people would say, well, I would rather have Django than Grief. Uh, you know, pick your favorite if you want to do one or the other. That's fine. But uh, these b bounty hunters have to be one of your top three priorities, and you do want to gear them well and get them up. And if you did gear 12 on all of them, uh, it would certainly make sense. Uh, they're good ships. They're good, good enough characters. And uh, there's reasons to do that. The Smuggler's Run event, we're going to have, uh, we're going to meet the requirements here. We need five Smuggler characters at six stars or higher to do the maximum Smuggler's Run. And uh, the loot that you get out of that is a bunch of slicing materials plus a group of mods and 300,000 uh, credits. So it's really a nice payout for a fleet uh, for an event that's easy to qualify for. We're going to Relic Dash, Rendar, Han, and Chewie anyway. We've been planning those characters all along. So uh, Dash will carry the whole thing. Dash with, with four other low star, uh, low gear characters is fine. Uh, we just need to have them at six stars to qualify. Uh, so we're going to take Young Han out of the store because we can buy him for shop currency. So we're going to do that instead of spending on energy. Uh, we do have to farm somebody out of the cantina. It could be Hondo. It could be L3, Kira, Veteran Han, Veteran Chewy. Uh, there's d different options. So whoever you want is your fifth. Uh, pick it. If, you d if you're a new player and you don't have any preference, uh, then do Hondo. He's an interesting character, and you can use him in, in a bunch of different scoundrel teams, so something worth looking at. Uh, Dash can carry the team. Just get the uh, guys to six stars. Chewbacca, even though the seven-star uh, part of the journey is pretty tough, uh, the six-star Chewbacca is not so hard to get. So you should be able to have these bounty hunters at six stars pretty early on. Uh, and basically, when your boss hits six stars from farming, uh, it should be possible to, to have that Chewbacca unlocked at six stars and be able to, to have this event on lockdown. Uh, the sooner you qualify for the event, the more times you can grab the loot. So uh, free, free stuff, free mods, it's good to have. This guy doesn't specifically run you through this, uh, how to get a seven-star R2. So in order to do the R2 event, you need Empire characters. We're building troopers. Then we're going to get Vader. Um, Palpatine's another Empire character that we can have. We're going to be building lots of rebels. It won't be any problem to unlock Palpatine. So with Palpatine, Vader, Troopers, we're going to have plenty of Empire characters to unlock R2-D2. So I'm not going to go through exactly which characters, because I can't tell exactly which characters you're going to have to 7 stars first. But uh, it's another one of those events that only requires gear 8 or 9 to do, and it's pretty easy. So you shouldn't have any problem at all getting R2 uh, unlocked. But it, is, it does require those 7 star characters. Uh, for the purpose of this build, I've sort of set the, the timing uh, for CLS around when Piet will hit seven stars from farming and assuming that you're going to be using him as one of your Empire characters to unlock it. But honestly, there should be other Empire characters available sooner. So, you know, whenever you're ready, go in and get the CLS. Phoenix we're not going to build. Um, we can get Thrawn, we can get Chimera. There's a lot of reasons why Phoenix might still be valuable. Um, and eventually we are going to go for them. Um, again, rolling this journey into the Leia journey means that we're going to relic Harrison Dula as part of the Profundity journey. Then uh, Captain Rex is part of the Leia journey. So once we've got all the other stuff for this journey under control, we might want to go after Phoenix. But especially in the first three or four months, I would say you have to relic Hera, but don't worry about the rest of the Phoenix. Don't try to. My recommendation is don't try to add them to the build and, and, and overextend yourself. That you can build them, but, uh, but later. The Jedi and Galactic Republic, in previous guides and for this guide, I feel like I need to acknowledge the Galactic Republic. They're pretty good for the early game. And uh, I showed Jedi Knight Anakin as a relic target, Qui-Gon Jinn as an Omicron target. And Padme could be a journey character that you could unlock uh, with your Geos. So I'm going to try to bring this all together. 
uh, I get asked this a lot, right? Like, why would I build a Padme team? Uh, I go into GAC, all those characters go into the Qui-Gon team, then I don't have anything for Padme. And my answer to that in the past and even now has always been, well, it's a Qui-Gon team in Grand Arena, and everywhere else it's a Padme team, right? Like, like I don't know how much more simple it can be. Yeah, of course, Qui-Gon steals all that stuff in, in Grand Arena, but who cares? Right, it's still it's still a Padme team everywhere else in the game. Uh, so the characters I have outlined here are Qui Gon, Jedinet, Anakin, uh, Mace, Kenobi, and Ahsoka. Now, um, Jedinet Anakin is a pilot. Mace Windu is a admiral for a fleet. Uh, Kenobi is an admiral for a fleet. Ahsoka Tano is a pilot. So this team is all about building the Galactic Republic that you would build for um, fleet anyway. And then you just build Qui-Gon Jinn, put an Omicron on him. And, uh, you know, I've, there's plenty of videos out there where you can see, uh, you know, one of my grand arenas, I went against the Darth Revan team. And it was a full relic Darth Revan team. I had a relic 7 Jedi Knight Anakin, <clears throat> an absolute trash for the rest of my um, Jedi. Uh, really low-level stuff. So I went in against the Darth Revan team. Darth Revan killed Qui-Gon Jinn in one hit. Uh, Jedi Knight Anakin got a turn and did his area effect ability and killed the entire opposing team. So <laughs> this, this team is no joke in, in Grand Arena. Uh, it, it's almost a guaranteed win somewhere in GAC for the cost of one Omicron and one Relic character with Jedi Knight Anakin. Two Zetas, you need the Zeta on Anakin and you need the Zeta. Well, no, you, I think you don't need the Zeta on Anakin. I'd have to take a look. Um, yeah, I think you don't. I think you just need the one on Qui-Gon Jinn. But anyway, if you want to build this team, it's fun. And uh, uh, again, the, 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 the Padme part of it now, I would say, um, has, has gone, gone away. Uh, if we unlock Padme and we built her up, she really needs those two Zetas. And if we've got a Qui-Gon Jinn team in Grand Arena, building a Padme team out for outside of Grand Arena uh, becomes an increasingly uh, steep challenge. Now, my Lokwitter account, this account's over three years old, and I've never been able to find the bandwidth to go back and relic the Padme. And uh, I haven't needed to, and I haven't missed it. So I would say that Padme is now a completely optional part of this uh, and, and really with light speed bundles available we're not going to be able to afford those two Zetas on Padme so build the Qui-Gon team if you want for Grand Arena but uh, don't worry about Padme in the current build and then for Galactic Republic we're going to build the Profundity um, and if we've invested in the Hound's Tooth this is what we're going to have for an early Galactic Republic team under the Negotiator. We'll use the Houndstooth as a tank, Jedi Knight Anakin in there, Five's ship as one of the starting three. We'll reinforce with Ahsoka, Plo, and potentially Rex's uh, ship in there as well. Or the clone uh, tank um, is, is also available. But, uh, but getting this fleet up and running as an offense or potentially as a second defense once you get to Chromium and Grand Arena is, is really important. So we are going to work on these characters somewhere in the background. We're going to build those ships and get this uh, negotiator purchased for Get2. I think it's a good reason to work on Galactic Republic. Now, again, they're low on priority. You're going to work on your journey first. You're going to work on the bounty hunters. You're going to build the CLS team. All that comes ahead of this other stuff. But then any leftover gear should go toward um, Galactic Republic. Geos have always been a big uh, priority for all of my guides. Their fleet is good. They really work well. But again, there's so much pressure on the Cantina energy in this build that uh, we, I really want to put the focus on the Cantina farms that we need for the raid, for the journey, for all the stuff that we have to unlock. And the Geos have to come a little bit later. Uh, once you're up and running on the journey, though, uh, if you're in that block where it says to farm Geos and you just say, well, I don't want to, I'm just farming signal data and the heck with the Geos, uh, again, I'm going to make a strong recommendation. Don't skip them. Don't skip them. The Geos are pilots. They have good ships. So 
three three of the characters are pilots, and there are three out of five that make a good team. So the team is good in Territory Wars. You put the uh, Omicron on Poggle, it's crazy good. Uh, it's required to unlock Wat Tambor and get his shards out of the uh, Territory battles. So there's just so many reasons why Geos are still good. Um, so don't skip them. I, I know a lot of people have skipped them, and um, it, it's... It doesn't help, right? And again, we can build a good fleet with this, just with what we've got. Just three Geo ships and that Vulture droid that we're already, we got out of the Hyperdrive bundle uh, is enough to start an early Malevolence fleet. We can make it better later, but uh, but yeah, this is this is already a, a top-notch fleet, even at uh, you know five-star ship with mediocre Geos. It's still better than any other fleet that you can build with the starting three capital ships. Uh, Moff Gideon is in the build. Hare is in the build very early. So let's talk about the raid. So at the time of this holocron, the speeder bike pursuit is the feature raid. And we really want to get into a guild that's doing this raid. I've heard from some people that, um, you know, early guilds are setting a requirement sort of like you need to have a million participation uh, is what they're looking for. So we're going to set this up so that we can pretty easily get to a million participation very early on with the account and get into a, a decent guild. Um, we're already going to be building a bunch of rebels. I've already set us up to build Imperial Troopers, and the Ewoks um, are, are able to be in the raid. So, yeah, we'll have plenty of points. And just as an example, I'm going to show you four teams. Uh, I started a t uh, project in 2023 at the end. Uh, Lex Talionis is the name of the account. And I started playing 1 to 85. I developed these four teams that I'm going to show you uh, for raid participation. Here we've got Gideon, Hera, and the Elder. We've got Piet, Han Solo, and Logre. And then uh, we've got uh, a couple of troopers with Veers and Stark with... Um, uh, Admiral Akbar, and then we've got Wedge with Paplu and that Stormtrooper that we're building. And with these four teams, uh, the gear levels are awful. You can see that the, these characters have terrible gear levels, right? And they've got terrible mods. So this is, you know, bottom of the barrel kind of stuff, and it's already 840,000 uh, participation. So just with the hyperdrive bundle and a little bit of work in some relevant characters, we should easily be able to get one million. Uh, but we do have to build uh, Moff Gideon. Uh, we're wanting to build Hera as early relic. And I am recommending to gear Wedge early on as a way to secure that million points of participation. And that should get you into just about any starter guild that, that you want. The C-3PO event, uh, don't skimp on getting the event done. 3PO is the fifth relic for the CLS team. It allows the CLS team to get the relics and use Datacrons. At lower GAC skill ratings, the CLS team will beat just about anything that the, the opponent puts on defense in, uh, in any fair matchups, for sure. Uh, they dominate Conquest. They're good in the Galactic Challenges. The CLS team's good everywhere. And C-3PO really puts this team over the top. Now, I'm using all the shop Ewoks that I can. Uh, most guides are going to tell you to build Wicket. I've got Tebow in there instead of Wicket. Again, just because you can buy Tebow out of the shop, we don't have the bandwidth to farm Wicket this early on. Um, you don't need to Relic Chirpa, but it can help in this journey. Uh, in the past, this is one of those journeys where you know you had to make the decision to gear the characters more or put Zetas on the characters, etc., uh, with the new raid currency system, it's not hard at all to get these characters to gear 11 or 12. They're easy. There's not a bunch of Cairo needed for this uh, build. So we can take Chirpa, Elder, Low Gray, Paplu, and Tebow and, um, you know, put them gear 10, 11, 12, wherever you want to try it and, uh, you know, get in there. And if you can't get it done, put a little more gear on the characters. If you can't get it done, put a little more gear on the characters. The... Seven-star um, version of C-3PO is one of the most variable uh, events in the game. Uh, some people have gone in there with relatively low gear and beat it on the first try. Others have had high gear and spent eight hours trying to unlock it without success. 
uh, there is just a massive amount of variability on what skills the enemy team picks and how many times they crit and just a lot of things. So you can do it with lower gear if you want to take a lot of tries. But uh, for me, I would say the Ewoks are an okay team now. They're, they're, they're okay. Uh, they work in the raid. So because you're building raid characters, I don't mind putting extra gear on them. It'll increase your raid participation. Uh, and if you have to put the Zeta on Chirpa, that's fine too. You can do that. Um, but be careful. You don't want to feel like you wasted a Zeta if you could have just, you know, gear 12 to one more Ewok and, uh, and, and succeeded. Put your best mods on the Elder. Make him go fast and take a lot of turns. He'll resurrect any other Ewoks that get killed. And you should be able to complete the event without too much problem. Uh, Pat Blue to tank. Uh, to tank at 12 is good so with uh, my experience was having the elder and the paplu at gear 12 with decent mods and, and the event didn't take too long to, to complete hunts falcon event the vader will be the fleet admiral in the event it, you do need some seven star capital ship we're building home one to seven stars so that we can get the profundity but just remember, like all this is going to come together at the same time. We'll get our seven-star capital ship. We'll get this Millennium Falcon done. We'll get the profundity unlocked all kind of in the same time frame. So you won't have resources enough to build your capital ship and the Millennium Falcon and everything. So at the moment your profundity fleet uh, is unlocked, you're still going to be working on a lot of this stuff. That's fine. You should still be beating anything else in your fleet shard. The event itself is not a walkover. It's also pretty RNG on this. Um, uh, relicking a Bosk can help, but uh, but overall, I think uh, just just be patient. Do the event several times. Um, switch around the reinforcement that you use. I think Slave One is your best bet to use as reinforcement. Use IG Two Thousand and Xanadu Blood and Hound's Tooth as your starting three. But uh, but you can mix and match that and maybe bring in the Xanadu Blood as your reinforcement if you feel like that works better for you. Um, but uh, but a Relic Bosk here can, can help with the event. So, like I said, you might get it on the 4th try or the 11th or the 1st. Who knows? Uh, just pick the skills that push the fleet toward the ultimate and just keep trying till you get it done. All right, uh, the Profundity event itself... I always used the Outrider and the Y-Wing tank. In the first battle, I used Cassian as the third and just focused on keeping healing immunity off my uh, tank, and it worked out okay. In the second battle, I used Biggs as a start. We used Cassian and Ghost as a reinforce. In the third and fourth battles, I used Cassian and Big as a reinforcement. used Ghost in the starting. And then for the, um, the bonus event, for the, um, for the, for the ongoing... Uh, extra event I always use bigs in the starting three so that's kind of how I did the profundity event and uh, there's a lot of RNG my experience with the profundity event is uh, don't be in a hurry don't if you try to focus down Xanadu blood and get it killed for example it often doesn't work out and Xanadu blood lives uh, you're better off just playing for time just just sort of let the enemy reinforce let them uh, do their thing, try to keep your tanks alive, and work your way to your alt. Once you get your alt off, everything dies, and you win the encounter. Um, having a relic bigs really does make a huge difference in how this encounter goes. So if you, let's say earlier in the build, I said if you're having problems with your early game fleet, you could build a relic bigs, and you wouldn't have to regret it later. Here's why. If you did have to build a relic bigs to stay in the top five in fleet, early on, uh, it'll come back as a big payoff here to make this event a lot easier. And then you just always start with bigs in your starting three, and um, the uh, opposing profundity, or the executor can ignore taunt on the Y-wing tank. So the relic bigs is a taunt that they can't ignore. If he's at relic, you'll be able to juggle your damage between the Y-wing tank and bigs. Bigs can recover protection every time you get target lock, so you'll uh, you'll have more flexibility in getting through the event. Um, and if you have problems with the event, Relic Bigs is maybe the, the answer that you need. Okay, um, 
What's next? So I do recommend that after you finish this journey that you move on to Galactic Legend Leia. Um, it's not the easiest journey. The relic levels are pretty high. Some of her characters are still single shard drops at the time of this uh, holocron, which is something that I haven't recommended in the past. But the new wrinkle in this uh, scenario is the light speed bundles. So imagine that we said, okay, we're going to work towards Sith Eternal Emperor or SLKR or some other GL that's easy, that's older, that's a good journey. Um, Partway through that journey, maybe they introduce a light speed bundle and they say, hey, here's all the characters for $10. Like, let's say we pick uh, Jedi Master Luke as our first journey because there's a lot of reasons to do that. So we start working on Jedi Master Luke um, and they come out with a Jedi Knight Luke bundle. And then four months worth of work, all these characters that we've been rel relicking, uh, we could have just bought them for $10. Well, that's going to be very frustrating for a new player to have to deal with. So far, they have not introduced any light speed bundles that include new characters. So if we chase one of the newer Galactic Legends, then we're pretty secure that they're not going to introduce a light speed bundle that's going to overlap all the, the work that we're already putting in. So by going toward Leia, we're sort of cutting the light speed bundles out as a variable. We're going to be working on newer content. We're going to get one of the best characters in the entire game. Uh, and pass up a lot of people who are doing something different, and then potentially we can still purchase the light speed bundles uh, to catch up on the older content. Star Killer could also be a very high value for this journey. We've already built Dash Rendar. Uh, we've got a Mon Mothma already built to Relic. We could use Kyle Katarn and start building a Mon Mothma team. Talon could be used for a Sith team, and we'll talk about some more reasons why we might want a good Sith team. Uh, Mar Jade goes on the Starkiller team itself. So for this particular path, if you like Grand Arena, this could be a shorter journey that you might want to undertake just to add value, get some more good uh, GAC teams. I told you I'd tell you a trick with fives. Again, if you're struggling with early fleet and you want to relic a couple characters, maybe you relic bigs and maybe you need to relic your fives as well to, to maintain that top five until you get profundity. So uh, you can build what I call a clone bomb team, and you do that by relicking your fives. You can farm up Shakti pretty quickly from fleet, get her unlocked. Um, you need her gear to be decent, and you need fives to be relicked. And the rest of the clones can be trash. And that, the, the AI is going to want to attack the weaker characters first. So if you bring this team in as an offensive team, the AI will often attack one of your weaker clones right away. That'll trigger the sacrifice from five. Fives will give his stats over, and especially speed and offense. Um, if you have a bunch of uh, trash gear uh, clones, but they all get all the offense and speed off of fives as well as his health and protection stats. Uh, now you have three more characters that are all acting as if they're the relic level of fives, even better than that. And uh, you'll you'll tear through almost any team at that point because your speed will be insane, your offense will be insane, and the clones will just go crazy and kill everything. It's great for Grand Arena offense. Fives is part of the ship. He's going to be part of the negotiator fleet. So again, this is one of those things where if you relic fives, you just can't go wrong. You're never going to look back and wish you hadn't done it because he's useful in the game. He's got a useful ship, and it's going to be uh, part of something for, for the rest of the game. Uh, you could also work on more assault battles. Uh, this guide secured three of the assault battles for us, right? We got troopers, um, gear 12, maybe one relic. Uh, with that piet if we did it. Uh, we can do two assault battles. The Forest, Moon, and Rebel Roundup assault battles can be done with troopers at Challenge Tier 1 or better. Uh, the Rebels with CLS especially should get Challenge Tier 2 with Military Might. So three of these are under control. So you could say, well, you know what? I'm going to work on more event income. Uh, you can build Night Sisters and put a Relic 5 Daka in there to get Challenge Tier 1 on Secrets and Shadows. Uh, it does take a pretty strong Sith team to get Challenge Tier 1, and this is where that Talon and the Sith team uh, would kick in here. The Starkiller Journey would, would help you get this uh, Assault Battle on lockdown. Ground War with Jedi is pretty tough. Um, I haven't found a good way to complete that without at least Jedi Knight Revan for Challenge Tier 1. If you get Jedi Knight Luke, if there's ever a Lightspeed Bundle or a way to get Jedi Knight Luke, 
um, he trivializes this event. There's a sequence that you can do with his moves that uh, you'll be able to complete this event all the way up to challenge tier three at three stars. Once you get Jenna Knight Luke, um, it's over. Um, so just to talk last, to close it out, uh, talk a little bit about my own personal experience. Uh, I've been playing the game for quite a while. I started a, a project in 2022. I started a new account to stay relevant to the early game. I started out on a gas journey. When Profundity came out, I looked at the journey and I said, this is one of the, the, the best journeys that they've ever built. It, it's got a lot of good characters in it. The characters have synergy together. The fleet is good. Everything that you want to build for this is, is fantastic. So I switched to that journey right away. And that uh, uh, account journey is uh, documented. You can go back and watch any or all of the Opticio updates and kind of see how that account progressed throughout the years. Now, I did play that free-to-play, and I acquired all of the aero magnifiers and droid brains. I was juggling energy, saving crystals, doing refreshes, and uh, it took me almost a year to close out that journey. And based on that experience, this journey is based on that experience, and it's why I'm recommending to, to spend um, on the account to skip that timeline, make that timeline as short as possible, and then just get on with however you want to play the account after that. I was locked out of fleet placement for almost the entire time. Um, top 10, but I couldn't get into the top 5, and it really hindered that account's progress, really hindered it. Um, so this guide is better, and it's based on that experience. Uh, free to play uh, after the hyperdrive bundle was a massive hamstring. It's possible, but it's not rewarding. Uh, and then, again, once you have the profundity and you can stay in top five in fleet, then you can pretty much do whatever you want, play for free. Skip the light speed bundles. It's, it's not as relevant then. This year, uh, 2023, I did start a new level one account completely free to play to become familiar with the game again. And that's why I can tell you with confidence that light speed bundles have uh, ruined the idea of 1 to 85. Anytime during your 1 to 85 journey, if a light speed bundle comes out with ships in it, they will take over the fleet arena and you will never have placement. And it is, um, it's, it's unplayable. It's not enjoyable. Uh, again, if you're a very patient person and you're just going to play free to play and you don't care if it takes you a year to complete your first journey, that's fine. But if you actually want to start playing the game, you have to get to 85. You have to be able to access those light speed bundles when they come out. Um, otherwise, you get buried and, and it's a reverse snowball. Once you get behind, you never catch up. It's just they get ahead of you. They push you out of fleet. They're getting the crystals. They're not. They're building their account with the crystals. You're not. Uh, it makes it harder and harder for you to catch up. And uh, the, the light speed bundles are the catch-up mechanic, and if you're not participating in it, it's the reverse of a catch-up mechanic. Will it will push you so far behind uh, that you will not enjoy the game. So if you don't want to spend any money on a game at all, uh, the bad news is this probably is not the game for you in the current environment. All right. So uh, then just in conclusion, I will say that this journey is going to optimize uh, the profundity with a CLS team. It's going to get your raid participation. You're going to get Galactic Challenge, Conquest, uh, Assault Battle, Smuggler's Run. It's as much stuff as I can fit into the journey early on uh, and make best use of the currency. So that's it's my plan. But if you have better ideas or you see something that I missed or something that would work better a different way, you know, it's a guide. Again, feel free to, um, to do it your own way. All right, now let's go through some memes, right? Friends don't let friends drive drunk. We've all heard this before. Uh, maybe if you like to work out or you've been any kind of athlete at all, you know, friends don't let friends le skip leg day. There's all kinds of these sayings, right? So let's make one for Swiggo. Friends don't let friends skip mod refreshes. Right from the start of the game, if you're going to follow this journey, if you're going to follow this plan, if you care at all about the long-term health of your account, don't skip mod refreshes. It's like skipping leg day. It will leave your account unbalanced. You'll have all kinds of relic characters, but you won't be able to use them very well because they'll have trash mods on them. So don't skip mods. Make that part of your strategy. Watch my mod mastery guide. Make sure you understand how to use mods, develop them. Um, I've got a whole set of filters there to make it easy. You just collect up a bunch of mods, you go through the filters. You, it, it's um, an easy way to make this minigame uh, an easier part of your game. So don't skip mods. 
That's going to wrap up this Holocron. Thank you all for watching. I hope it helps some new players get a good start to the game and know that they're using their resources in the most efficient way uh, to help them play the game long term. Please subscribe if you haven't done that already. Notification bell to watch more of my stuff in the future. Uh, you can join us over on my Discord. The link is in the description down below. It's in the header up above. You can click on that. It's a great community for new players, mid-game players, lots of helpful people willing to talk about uh, builds, paths, guides, uh, anything you want to ask questions. There's an Ask Loquitur channel. You can come in there and ask me questions about these build paths directly, read what other people have asked. So it's a great resource. I hope to see you over there. I do have a Patreon for those who want to support the channel and help me out. Uh, the link is also down in, in the below. You can uh, join over there. It gets you access to a special channel in the Discord where you can ask me for advice, questions directly. And, of course, I'm very responsive to my Patreon group. So maybe for some that would be an option. And... Uh, that's going to wrap it up. Please remember to hit that like button on the way out if you didn't hit it on the way in. And I will see you in the next Holocron.